It is a special day guys. If you know anything about me, you know anything about the channel, you've been following the progress. This is a kit, which if there ever was a kit that is destined for me, designed for me, and something I need to get on with, it's this. I like tanks. I like German tanks. I like the Panzer I, it's okay. I like the Spanish Civil War, it's a very big subject of mine. But having this in 1 16th scale, with the amount of detail that's inside this, and the amount of thought that's gone into this kit, and the very fact that it exists, it's a very good thing. So let's get into it. Here you can see this is uh, this is a TACOM kit, which is a limited release in a Breda version, which we'll get into in a minute what that means, of this Panzer one. And um, that is solely available through Ammo MIG in uh, Spain. Now they've obviously taken it on board to do something for their own, uh, obviously being a Spanish company. So this release um, is celebrating 100 years of the uh, Spanish Legion, which was uh, formed in 1920, as far as I can tell from uh, what it says here. And this release represents uh, the Panzer I Breda version, which was a field modification. There was four vehicles that um, had it done to them during the Spanish Civil War. Um, the Germans supplied the Panzer one a into the uh, Spanish Civil War. I think it's roughly around 100 vehicles went in with a few of the command versions. Um, there was a few Bs as well, which has uh, got a longer chassis, but all of those were uh, armed with uh, two twin MG34 machine guns in the turret. So pretty much anti-personnel um, tanks as opposed to an infantry support, as opposed to tank on tank uh, vehicles. Um, and here we've got some information. So what happened to these vehicles? Um, was a Breda Model 35 light anti-aircraft gun, which is a 20mm gun, was uh, modified and put into the turret. And to allow for that, they raised it with this um, extra uh, portion of the turret, which was welded on. Now, we won't go all through this, you, you know, you need to buy the kit to get all of this, but what this uh, goes through is they've, they've done a lot of work on the research here, to get these vehicles right, because notoriously anything to do with the Spanish Civil War is difficult to track down in the first place. Uh, these vehicles are even more complicated. Um, there was four vehicles and they're listed out as this. You've got vehicle number 351, vehicle X, which is this one with the X on top, vehicle L, which is identified by the letter L being painted on it, and vehicle H, which had an H on the glacius plate. So um, MIG, with the help of a few people that are mentioned here, um, have uh, gone to great sort of depths to uh to, to get this correct and that that's what you want from a kit isn't it especially something as special as this so all through this um it represents um lots of information regarding the anniversary and it's it, it's so well done it's really good certainly from my point of view i mean this is just a gold mine um we've i'll give you a flash of some of the reference pictures that we've got there so it does show you some pictures uh, but I, do, I don't really want to show too much on the video um, because they're notoriously difficult to get hold of and um, in a lot of people's private collections so it's not for me to um, show them on this uh, channel too much so uh, typical um, things when you when you're doing anything with ammo um, products like like uh, the books and stuff gives you a good breakdown of, of all the things you need to do read this first and gives you a good explanation then we're into the parts breakdown so there you can see we've got uh, quite a few sprues. You've got the, the upper hull, the turret, which is um, specific for this version. You've got the lower hull, and then all the rest of the parts are, are spread across the rest of the sprues. We do have a small piece of photo etch for the grills, for the exhaust covers, and we've got some cable as well. Uh, construction is typical with most tanks, starting with the lower hull, um, the running gear, and bringing all of that together, and then when all the wheels are on, um, this is a very old sort of German tank, as it were, one of the early ones. So the um, running gear is actually quite old looking. It's got a it's got a bracing bar joining the um, suspension between the the bogies. So it all looks a little bit different, and it um, can be a little bit complex. So you want to take your time as you as you're building this, and just sort of um, make sure you understand how everything's meant to be going together. Then the tracks go on and they are individual link tracks with uh, plastic pins. So they're going to be fully workable. Now on the sprue, they are, they are um, they're not loose, they're, they're on a sprue, the, the tracks, and I think they've got three or four sprue gates. So, you know, a little bit of clean up, but um, once it's done, it's ready to go. And you've got 86 pins and 86 tracks. 
and that should make for some extremely good looking tracks actually give a nice bit of weight in this scale as well once we've got um, the lower um, hole all sorted we start to get on to the top so we've got this decking breakdown there which has got the side fenders joined together and gives you some structure to the top of the um, superstructure that's going to be built on top of this so we get all of that sorted then we're running into actually bringing on the superstructure so we've got different parts going on here to uh, make up that you've basically got a front section for the Panzer one and then the rear engine deck which joins together and then gets put onto the lower um, hull or lower chassis and that's happening here with the photo etch grills going on um, then we've got the engine deck as well. There's no internal detail to this. I, uh, you know, you could argue whether it needs it or not, but it's not something I'd be looking to do anyway. So it's perfect from my point of view. Then we've got, so all of this is going to be exactly like the Tacom kit when it comes out. The Panzer 1A, the mainstream release is going to be literally up to this. This kit only changes by the turret and um, you can tell already that, that you've basically got half of the turret as well. So the Panzer 1A is going to be just as good as this is going to be identical I'm sure of it so um, if you're looking at that one this one's direct from MIG if you miss out of this or it's limited production you are going to get the mainstream release of the Tacom kit so that's something you could look at as well which gives you the World War II um, subjects and obviously you could do a Spanish Civil War one as well so if you had your heart set on it then we've got the Breda gun going together so as you bring the turret on we put the front we put the, the mantlet on to the turret and that's where the um, the gun is and it looks as though it's workable I think and that's um, one piece, which is what the end is one piece with a hollowed out end, so that's good. And the join is in a natural sort of join there. Then it's on to um, decaling and painting. And it's got your breakdown again. This is what Ammo do. They do books on um, uh, modelling tutorials, and it's nice to have bits of that all through the instruction booklet. It's very well represented. Then we've got the four marking um, options. Now, this is fantastic, because you often see historically with some of the... Uh, Panzer I representations from Spain that they're grey with a Spanish flag on them. None of them were grey at all. They were all camouflage, which is this, exactly like this. And these are the colours. And um, the scheme, I forget what it is, but I've got it written on the um, on the website. I've done a blog post on it. It's the early script scheme with a green base, and then the yellow and brown goes on. It looks very much like the late war script scheme, where the yellow is the base. But remember that the green is what goes on first, and the yellow and the brown are added to it. So here we can see colour callouts are for uh, MIG paints, uh, which is not really surprising. So we've got uh, first marking option, which is referred to as H, which is on the uh, front of the vehicle here. Then we've got 351, which is on this one. Then we've got X, which is this one. And then we've got um, L, which is this one. So all very well represented and the, the marking schemes the, sorry, the camouflage pattern is actually different for each of them, and that is picked up in the um, photos. And certainly on this one, you can see that they've tried to replicate the camouflage pattern, and you can see it in the picture that it is different. Uh, when you look at the historical um, reference, you can see that the turret is obviously newer than the hull, so the paintwork shows up a bit stronger, um, and that's been um, shown here in this scheme, which is very nice to see. So, uh, great work there from, um, from Ammo. And just to finish it off, you've got a lovely um, period poster there that's been printed, which is a poster of the Spanish Legion's first recruitment centre, 1920. Uh, which is from, as I say, this is why I don't want to show too much, but I think the poster's all right, which is from um, Sergio Rosado's private collection. And you'll find that with a lot of these uh, sp Spanish Civil War related subjects, that there's a lot of private collectors out there. And, you know, you don't see a lot of photos, but maybe a lot of them do actually exist. So... It's always um, it's who you know in this stuff, I think, so uh, it's best to get on some of the Facebook groups and ask the question, because you never know what turns up. So let's have a look in the kit. So first off, we've got the uh, decal sheet here, which has quite a few of the Spanish flags on them. Uh, this is a very matte finish, extremely matte actually, um, and you can see the carrier film there. So on the H, for instance, is um, there's quite a bit there but it's nice and tight around the X. So you just want to bear in mind, they obviously put the carrier film there because if they just had it going around the H, as soon as you take it off the sheet, it might um, coil up, but you've got the opportunity to cut around that if you want to. But everything else is looking very good. All the um, uh, printing's very much in register. Uh, can't really say how strong some of the colors are, although they do look very good. The whites especially look, look quite strong, but you, know, you won't know until you get it on the actual model. Um, and everything's there. You've got the uh, unit marking there as well. So it's um, 
it's a nice sheet to have. Should complement these vehicles very well. Then we've got a, the photo etch, so that's just the uh, the mesh uh, guards that go over the two exhausts at the uh, rear of the vehicle on the fenders. So that's nice stuff. And then we've got some um, copper wire, which is uh, the towing cable which goes around the front, gets wrapped around in a triangle like that on the front of the vehicle. So first off we've got the lower hole which is one piece, nice size, here you can see how big the vehicle is going to be. Perfect um, perfect type of vehicle for 1 16th scale, it's not too big, um, just, just sort of manageable. It's obviously going to be a sizeable model but um, that's what you got. And then this is the key part to this release which is the breader version of the turret. And there you can see you've got nice strong weld bead going right the way around this new section which is the bit that drops on the top. So um, I imagine we'll be using that lower turret, it would be um, very representative of what you're going to get in the actual release for the Tacon kit. Details very nice and we've got recessed um, screws here, so it's flathead screws all around, or bolt heads. And then we've got raised bolt heads down around here, everything looks really good. Nice and crisp, no flash, no problems. Nothing wrong with any of the moulding by the looks of it. All very good. Then next we're on to the tracks and as you can see, the like I mentioned with the locating pins, we've got uh, three points, but they're very fine and I imagine they're not going to be too much of a problem, to be honest. Um, there's actually... Oh, this must be... Oh, I don't know if something's going on here because in the side of the sprue it's got cutouts. Um, but it doesn't really mean that you, you it's, it's nothing to do as far as putting the pin through or anything. It must just be uh, how they've moulded the um, hollow uh, holes. But anyway, these come off and then you use the track pins, which are also on a sprue. And um, you just slide those in and that should join your tracks up. So it looks like a very sensible way of doing it. And let's, um, let's try a bit. Well, there's nothing wrong with these tracks. I've just put these four together. Um, probably less than 30 seconds for each piece of track and I've just nipped off the pins so I haven't done any cleanup on them but it's just on the ends um, I do get this you just got to sort of check that where the two bits join that it goes and then it snaps through so there we go there's the track there's the pin in one end flat bit the other end and um, very workable, a little bit stiff so you have to um, you have to get them set correctly but yeah there we go no problem workable tracks um, they're not massively loose like I say they hold their shape whatever you set them to they hold their shape so you just have to once they're on the vehicle make sure they're looking right and not sitting up but, as far as tracks go, it can't get much better than that. Then we've got our next um, kit spe specific sprue. <laughs> Couldn't say that. Uh, which gives you the mantlet and the uh, everything to go with the breader gun. So here is the actual gun um, barrel. And we've got a hollowed out end there. Looks like we've had slide moulding going on here. Everything looks very good again. Just like everything else as far as we've seen on the kit, um, we've got some nice weld beads running along here on that section. Uh, we are going to have, yeah, we've got a little seam line on the barrel, but I mean, that's nothing that we can't take care of. And there's a bit of weld bead texture on the edge of this uh, mantlet there as well. Yeah, that's looking fine. We've got a little horn there as well that goes on the front. Um, then we're on to the more generic parts of the Panzer One kit and this gives you the front of the hull with the uh, superstructure at the top, the lower part of the turret, front fenders, um, commander's hatch, armoured side hatch and access panel with the uh, top opening part as well and this is the, the bit there as well. So this section goes on the side there and then this is where the door opens up like that. Again, same level of detail all the way over there. You've got the recessed screws that are uh, quite um, prominent on the Panzer ones. It's a well-known feature. You've got them there as well. All looking very good. 
no ejector pin marks in places where you're going to worry about them. And I mean, construction looks very straightforward. You're not going to know until you get into the kit, obviously, but as far as I can't see any problems, it's all literally laid out like it should be. Very nice and looks like uh, engineering's been done to a, to a good level. Then we've got the first of our duplicate sprues, which basically makes up most of the running gear as far as the bogies are concerned that they actually sit on. And then we've got the idler wheels. Um, there's a few small hatches as well for the, the rear deck and a few of the um, uh, vision ports as well. Uh, but it, it all looks really good. So again, duplicates here of the exhaust. So it's all the things that double up, which makes sense. Um, hollowed out exhaust ends, a nice touch. Um, good detail on the leaf spring ever so slightly basic I suppose I mean what can you do it's layers of metal I don't suppose you can have it really looking any more refined than it is nice bulk detail there as well on the um, uh, tensioner so this is this is the bit for the idler which can be tensioned forward or back and we've got screw detail there as well screw thread yeah very faint screw thread or, or screw thread on the um, on the actual uh, bolt where the bolt is threaded again no problems that I can see across that then we've got some uh, lenses as well, just for the, the one light. Well, there's two lights at the front and then the one main light. No issues there with those either. And here we've got um, the sprue which caters for pretty much everything that's um, going to be attached to the vehicle. So we've got the tools here which have um, moulded on tool clamps, which might be a little bit heavy for some people in the scale. Um, you could go down the route of cutting those off and um, maybe getting a set of ABBA uh, ones. I know they do a, a set in one sixteenth scale. We've also, interestingly, got um, parts for the the major release as well. We're just lacking the turret because we've got the mantlet, the um, section that holds the two machine guns as well, and the vision port all on here. So that you know, that shows you there uh, what you're going to be getting in the main release. And um, it is actually quite nice machine gun barrels here, and they've got hollowed out ends and nice um, drilled out cooling jackets as well. There's plenty of detail on this one, but there is a lot of scope for you to add some detail as well. I mean, these springs here uh, they're a solid um, solid part and they're part of the running gear uh, you know they probably could look better as actual coils of wire for instance and then we've got the engine deck as well which again has the same level of detail the same level of detail over it with uh, weld beads running around the sides then we've got another duplicate sprue as well which caters for uh, the running gear so we've got the wheels which have these uh, spacers uh, I believe it's a spacer that goes in the middle I can't remember what it is for actually but um, it's something to do with that um, it's not the separate tyres the tyres are attached uh, then we've got the, um, I, uh, the the small wheels that go along the top I cannot remember what they're called I keep wanting to say idler wheels but that's the rear wheel I think um, Nevertheless, you've got those with um, printing on the uh, tyre wall as well. Don't know if we've got that on the actual... No, we don't. Uh, but we've got Continental on the front of these with nice bolt head detail as well. Uh, good sprocket there as well with sharp bolts running around the outside and the inside as well. Very nice looking stuff. And we've also got um, some of the smaller details. Tow cable end for the uh, tow cable that we've got was shown earlier. Again, same level of detail running all the way over this one. And then the last sprue caters for fenders, which was mentioned are running along the um, are running along this section, which gives support for the superstructure that's going to go on the top of that. And we've got part of the rear deck and a few other small parts that are going to go to um, making up some of the uh, different sections. These are the bars that join the running gear together and make it be give it the suspension in um, in line and a few uh, bits for the superstructure as well which is bits of armour that get bolted on all with weld beads running around the outside these are one piece they're not two halves and they are the exhaust um, inlets I think they go in and then it shoots out the back of them and then we've got another we've got a crowbar there as well which has the tool clamp on it and again all looking very good very sharp and nice detail we've got the block here for the uh, jack which is three bits of wood, no wood grain detail on that, so you want to bear that in mind. But everything's looking very good again. So what a great release there from um, Ammo with MIG, and uh, fantastic for me personally. I think this is a, this is a, a sort of, uh, well I would have never thought you'd get a kit like this, so um, that's fantastic. Uh, if you have missed out on this one, I think that there's still pre-order or it's still available from MIG, so check out the website. Failing that, you're going to get the main release of the Tacom kit, which I'm sure will be around everywhere, and that's going to be the Panzer 1A version. 
which is very much what's in this box, just minus the turret. So, um, if it's of interest, check it out, see what's about, and um, see what you can find. Love to know your thoughts, and uh, please do leave a comment below, I always read them. And uh, thanks for tuning into the channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I will be building this kit. Literally, as we stop here, I'm going to put this review up and then I'm going to be starting this one tonight and I'm going to put it up in sections so you don't have to wait until the whole thing's built. I should have something up, you know, possibly even over the weekend. Who knows? We'll have to see how it goes. But certainly into next week, should have um, a part of this going up, showing what the running gear is like, for instance. And um, we'll take the build through to the end. So, uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for staying uh, with the channel and I'll see you in the next video.